Okay, there really isn't much left to my example, so we're just going to do a few more that primarily show off, not show off, but show you how to use these selectors effectively and show you some of the flexibility that's out there. The first one I want to do is I want to disable my RDO red button. Well, if I'm going to disable it, that's an attribute. So to disable it, I have to use the ATTR process or the ATTR function instead of CSS. So in here, I'm going to say still give me RDO red. And in a minute, we'll do an example where we pick more than one object. We want to change its attributes. And notice there's also remove, remove attribute function. So you take this away, whoa, handy. Okay. Is it any easier than title equals the empty string? Probably not, but it depends on the attribute, but it exists. Again, what attribute do you want? I want the enabled attribute. And what do you want to set it to? True, false, I believe that's right. Before you go copying it too crazy, let me test it. Oh, radio button still available. So did I do that right? <coughs> Excuse me. ATTR, art attribute value. Oh, <laughs> God, I do this all the time. There is no enabled property. It's disabled. The attribute's name is disabled, not enabled. Yeah, Paul, that's why I always mess it up every single year. That's better. Nope, stole it. No, now you have to re reverse it. It's not false. It's true. Oh, that's true, yeah. There we go. Now it's grayed out. A little hard to see, but grayed out. Can't click on it. Blue's still good, but I can't click on red. So now it's disabled. So the kicker there was not the two things. First of all, recognizing the difference between attributes. That's the stuff you put in tags, but it's not inside a style. Title, alt, height, width. So if I wanted to stretch a picture, you could put that in a for loop. There are delay functions out there to say, wait three seconds before you do this. There was an example on the W3 school site. Okay. Or wait one second, do it again, do it again, do it again. All, right. All kinds of stuff out there. I can make a picture bigger by changing its attributes and hopefully its mode is in size mode so that it stretches. But this one's an attribute, so we have to use the ATTR function or method. Then which attribute do you want to change? Make sure you're using the right attribute. And then what new value do you want to set it to? Harold? Is, is there a way to toggle like an attribute? Or would you just write like Toggle is a function. Just write this statement and say if it's yeah, that right now that's what I would do is say disabled equals some flag. Right. And I could just say not flag. Or I could actually probably say attribute red or RDO or attribute parentheses disabled. And that gives me the value that's in there and then just reverse it. That would probably work. Doesn't make a lot of sense to do it in form load, but in the button, yeah, I could just switch it. Since you ask, let's do a quick little test here. Alert. Um, RDO red status or disabled is. And then concatenate to that pound RDO red 
ATTR disabled. So now what I'm saying is it don't set it, but get it. I think. Fingers crossed. And that I put in the button, right? Yep. I'm not getting any errors down here. That's still on. This is still unavailable. Click on that. Click on the button. RDO red disabled is disabled. Interesting. It's not true or false. Okay, even though I set it to true here, when I ask for it, it tells me it's disabled. It doesn't say true. But can I ask that in a question? All right, here's another. Can I do this? Ooh. <laughs> so yes I can obviously because it was true before now I'm saying not since I put the not on it converted it back to a boolean it's jQuery telling us some things here that, that's interesting I wonder if I can and, and I'll let you wonder but I wonder if I can write an if statement that says is it equal to disabled in quotes probably or I can say, okay, yeah, you're gonna make me do it. I can tell just by looking at you. <laughs> and I can't stand waiting for you to do it. So here we go. If, here we go again, let's get that RDO attribute. If the RDO disabled, disabled, that should be enough, right? If it's disabled, then let's do an alert that says it's disabled. Else alert. It's enabled. Make it cap so I can tell apart. Get rid of this guy so I don't get yelled at twice. But now I'm curious what happens here, right? Because I think this comes back as true or false as well. For that attribute. For that attribute, exactly. Every attribute is probably a little bit different. Some of them are text. It's disabled. Okay, so now if I take the RDO red disable true out, it's disabled. Why is that? Because disabled and enabled are both non zero. But wait a minute, it's disabled. Yeah, but in the if statement. Disable the enable on both zero. I noticed this at home too. Once I disable it in code, particularly jQuery, it sticks. I refresh that page. Try Control F5 or I don't want a voiceover. Go away. <laughs> I wonder if I could have told it to go away. Where's the refresh button? Right after the I know that one is, but notice my red button. It's still disabled. That's weird. Can you save the file? Huh? Yeah. Or just in code no nuts. or just yeah, I know, but I think I remember doing this before, that once it's disabled, it stays that way until I enable it, even though I'm refreshing and reloading the page, and that's kind of scary. I don't think it's that. Uh, 
all time. And it says it's enabled. So just this was enough. All right, but then the next question is, can I ask if it's disabled? It's disabled. So it's true, it's false, it's disabled, it's probably enabled. Interesting. Gives you a lot of flexibility to write it however you want. I guess my favorite way was that way. But the other thing to recognize here is we changed that attribute, and for some bizarre reason, it's stuck. Maybe it's Firefox. So let's find out. Let's go back to Chrome. Okay, it's disabled. And when we ask, it says it's disabled. Okay. Yeah, it works in Chrome. It works regularly? Yeah. Okay. So if I now comment this out. In Chrome, I refresh the page. It's a Firefox fluke. fluke. Firefox fluke. Hmm. Weird stuff. Might have to Google that one just to see what they say. All right. So that's another way that we can access certain things. I don't think I want this to be in here forever. So now I gotta find my brackets command for comment. Okay. What else is in my notes to do here? Disabled equals true. Whenever a radio button is clicked, whenever any radio button is clicked, we wrote that code, right? In JavaScript. Say they click any radio button, turn that off. We wrote a method to do it. But now We can simplify it a little bit and create an event handler that says any radio button. Now that one I had to look up. That's, an, that's a selector that says any input that's a radio button. Here's this click event. What do I want to do in here? I just want to take my RDO color and hide it. So now if I have 60 radio buttons, unfortunately clicking any one, this is great if you only have one set of radio buttons. You get more sets of radio buttons, and you have to get a little more specific in your selector, say, any radio buttons that are in this group box. Yes, sir? Two things. Do you already have error caller SCSS that can go through the error caller? Yes. So that makes it visible. That's on that's on the that's on the on the documents that even when you click the radio button. Yeah, but this ex this doesn't execute because it's a function. It doesn't execute right away. Right. Well, Only when I click on a radio button does it hide. Right. I just turned it on right away just to simulate the user makes an error. Go ahead. Uh, last question. Can, can you do, like, any radio button that has the class whatever? Yes. Okay, so you just put a period in the don't, don't ask me. First of all, if all the radio buttons, they probably have the same, if they have that same class, nobody else is going to share it. So you wouldn't have to say radio button. You'd say anything that has this class. Yeah. Now, if you had a class that was used in radio buttons and checkboxes and buttons, then maybe. Right, but yeah, there, there are, if, if you start looking through the documentation, there are, you can make uh, selection strings here that are this long that say if it's a radio button that's inside a group box that's on this form that's in this and that and that and that and that comes after a label 
There's all kinds of bizarre things that they've added to jQuery. I don't want to call them bizarre. Somebody obviously needed them. There's all kinds of fairly complicated ways to select objects on your form. And that's just using CSS. Then there's DOM selectors, and that gets even more crazy. So let's save that. Back to Firefox. Refresh my form. Air markers on. This is disabled. So nothing happens. But if I click on this one, it turns it off. Now, if I turn this part off, no. If I, why is my radio button disabled? Because I never turned it back on again. It's stuck, right? Seems to be stuck. So if I put this back to false, now my radio button should come back to life. And I can click on this one, and it still it turns off the air marker because it was any one of the radio, any radio button now does that. And imagine five of them here, five different colors, any one of them, one line, one line of code, two, because I had to write the function to turn them off. How much code did we write before? About a line and a half, right? It wasn't much longer. We had to define it in, in window onload, and then we had this little itty bitty two line function that hides the air marker. Most everything can be done. Now I take it back because in window onload, we had two commands that said this radio button link it, this radio button link it. If there were five of them, there would have been five lines of code in window onload to say this radio button link it to the hide the error marker method. The so this here is that I would think you could have one radio button that actually had multiple things happening. Yes. Where before we could only link it to one. One event? No, I don't think that's true. You can link it to multiple mm -hmm. events? Yeah, you can have one object linked to multiple events and then you're back to your 400 page document about what order those events occur in. Okay, what else we got here? Um, radio button reset, show the error marker again. Well, that should be easy. I don't know. We'll just do it. So dollar, this one's a pound sign, BTN reset. That's going to reset the form anyways because it is a reset button. But just like we could do in jQuery or JavaScript, we can add additional functionality to it and return false and cancel the normal functionality. But I believe I saw somewhere in jQuery, there is a command that says interrupt the default behavior, something like that, or bypass the, the default behavior. There's no faults to cancel, though it would work. But you can get rid of default behavior as well. So if I click, here's the function. Just turn the error marker back on again. Just so I can keep testing, probably. Just demonstrations of stuff that you can do. So now I click a radio button that worked. Reset. Radio button that worked. I can test all five of them and make sure that they're all linked to the same thing. In JavaScript, you had to type the names right. You had to list all five of them. Here, you just say, give me all the radio buttons. But I'm pretty sure there's also radio, but you can use radio buttons by group. There's a way to figure out which group of radio buttons you want. Which means it's attacking the name somehow, using the name. Cool. Almost done. On submit, change all the labels to blue. How do you think I get to all the labels? It's a tag, right? No pound signs, no dots, no CSS, no attributes, no nothing. All the labels. Now I want to change the CSS though, right? So I want to change the color to blue. So this selects every label on the form.
solar colon radio that the colon stands for hyphen. This one here? Yeah. It's a special kind of selector. That's all. There's there's all kinds of special kinds of selectors. Yeah. There's okay. probably a colon, I don't know, another kind of input type where we could pick number. Do something to numbers, do something to whatever. But the selectors is a, is a language all its own here. Feels like it to me. Because they've added so much to it to give them the flexibility to say, pick the first item in a list box or the first, or in a, in a, in a list of radio buttons. Pick the first one, the first list item. And then there's selectors for selected or variables that are objects that have errors. And they're just, they're, it's mind boggling, the selectors. Go ahead. So wanted to toggle the um, text to turn away, how would you do that? Toggle it? Yeah. I'm going to have to use an if statement. Because now I can probably say give me the color. But now I have to, I don't know if I can go to every label and get one value. I don't think I can do that. So be interesting. I have not tried this before. This says all the labels. Hopefully they're all the same color. Dot CSS parentheses color. I'm not sure that's legal because this refers to a lot of objects instead of just one. But if this doesn't work, then I just pick one of them. Since they're all the same color, I just pick one by ID and ask what color are you. Well, let's see if this works. That works. That's what we're trying to do. Color is RGB blue. It worked. So it just gave me the first one. I don't know, because they're all blue, because I changed them all. They're all blue. All the labels are blue. And so it gave me... And that's, okay, what does it happens in here? Same thing. But notice this, right? That's probably a string. How would you ask an if statement to say, is it blue? This gave me what I wanted, but it converted it to a text because I concatenated it. But what does it really give me? Would that be like the same thing where you can ask if it's RGB or if probably. it's blue? You can say if the color double equals RGB 0025, but do you need spaces after the commas and all that? My guess is probably. Be right with you. Doubt it. Console's on. Then like that. Blue is not defined. How about quotes blue? You have to define it as a CSS color blue. CSS color. But now I didn't get an error, it says not blue. So no, I didn't get an error, but I am getting not blue. So then the next question is, can I put RGB zero comma space zero comma space 255? No, my quote's right because I'm getting funky looking. Oh, I guess it's red. Blue. 
I think there's a better way to do this. If you did a little research into jQuery, there's probably a way to pick colors. Because that's just a string that I'm comparing to now. Because this is a string, JavaScript probably is converting that to a string. Just like when I concatenated it before, it gave me a string. So this works, but I'll bet you somewhere in jQuery there's a way to determine colors, ask if they're colors. What if I wanted to set it to a specific shade of red, green, and blue of 11, 11, 175 for some goofy reason? There's probably a way to do it. And if there's a way to do that, then that's probably an RGB function type of thing. Then I can just compare it to that function. I'm interesting it just shows you that was blue. That's cool. That's brackets. Brackets does that. You know, color code in there will tell you what it is, even though it's hiding inside a string. So that's what I got for you. Again, just a quick overview of the assignment. Pick a couple of things that CSS can do and apply them in a reasonable way. You know, don't just do it to do it like I did here. Turn the labels blue just for grins. Try to make some valuable use out of it. Use two of those. And then if you got some time, you want a couple extra credit points, go do a little more research on UI or jQuery UI and find a plug in there that might do you some good. As I was during the break, I was looking through this book that I have, and there's a UI date picker in there that looks a lot like the Chrome date picker. The question I then have is what happens when you have a date picker type date and you apply jQuery to it? And maybe you don't. The other thing I've discovered is a lot of the stuff that I used to do with JavaScript has now been supplanted by HTML5, that date picker. We're not there yet, but most of the browsers do it, a couple of the browsers do a very nice job with date pickers. When the rest of them catch up, that's a jQuery tool that nobody cares about anymore. It might be a little more flexible, though. End of lesson, end of all lessons, you are now HTML, JavaScript experts and have some introduction to jQuery. I don't know about experts, but you know as much as I do. Next semester, we'll put that to use. Any remaining assignment, that would be this one, right? Because you already have a due date for arrays. Okay. Yep. So this one's due next Wednesday or Wednesday last, 17th. Get them in early, make me happy.